Imagine stopping whatever you are doing to take a short nap in a random location. Maybe you doze off for a minute or two. And when you wake up and open your eyes, everything has changed. And everything has changed because you are now in a different location. Maybe you wake up in a different city. Seems highly unlikely, but that is exactly what Gil Perez of the 16th century claimed happened to him. More on that in a moment. Teleportation, as commonly understood, refers to the instantaneous transportation of an object or person from one location to another without traversing the space in between. In the realm of theoretical physics, there are discussions about quantum teleportation, which involves the transfer of quantum states between particles over large distances. But this is quite different from the teleportation commonly portrayed in science fiction. There are stories of individuals throughout time who have apparently spontaneously teleported. Maybe it is a matter of the perception of the individual, but there have been stories of folks who have witnessed people vanishing before their very eyes. Any observable occurrence, event, or situation that is perceived through the senses or detected through instruments and is subject to scientific inquiry is a phenomenon. But when it comes to observing spontaneous teleportation, it is an oddity, an irregularity. It's an exception. Each of these expressions implies an event or situation that is unexpected, rare, or divergent from what is typically anticipated or experienced. It's a freak occurrence or just the devil playing games. The story of Gil Perez, also known as Teleportation Man, is a legend, really. It's been passed down through generations. According to the tale, Gil Perez was a Spanish soldier stationed in Manila during the 16th century, which was then part of the Spanish East Indies. The incident is said to have occurred on October 24th, 1593. As the story goes, Perez was on guard duty at the governor's palace when he suddenly found himself in Plaza Mayor, Mexico City, thousands of miles away from his post in Manila. And so Perez was arrested on suspicion of desertion. When they questioned him, Perez recounted the events as he remembered them. He claimed to have been in Manila just moments before and he could describe the details of the governor's palace accurately. Now the news of his apparent teleportation reached the authorities in the Philippines, who confirmed that Perez had indeed been on duty there shortly before appearing in Mexico City, according to the witnesses at the time. Then there was Carlos Mirabelli who was a Brazilian psychic or medium who gained attention in the early 20th century for his claims of paranormal abilities, including teleportation. Mirabelli's teleportation events involved him moving from one location to another without conventional means of transportation. He conducted seances and demonstrations of his psychic abilities, claiming to possess a variety of paranormal powers including telekinesis, materialization, and telepathy. 
There's a story about Mirabelli that goes, some of his companions witness him phase out and disappear right in front of them while they were standing on a train station platform on their way from Sao Paulo to Port of Santos. Maybe 15 minutes later, they received a phone call from Mirabelli claiming to have ended up in Sao Vicente, which was 56 miles from where he vanished. Apparently, dozens of people witnessed this. Now, if you think those occurrences are strange, what I actually find puzzling is that these people apparently take things with them, whatever clothing they are wearing, and in one particular case, a car. That is the story of Geraldo and Rafa Vidal. This version comes from MexicoUnexplained.com. The Mysterious Teleportation of Geraldo and Rafa Vidal. Dr. Geraldo Vidal and his wife Rafa felt dazed as they regained consciousness on the side of a rural road just outside of Mexico City. It was early May in the year 1968. The couple had not remembered pulling off the road for a short nap, and when they shook off their sleep-induced disorientation, they did not know where they were. The road seemed strange, and so was the terrain. There were strange mountains in the distance, which looked almost like volcanoes. The countryside was green. It was warm outside, not cold as when they had left their house. The two felt unusually groggy and both had severe neck pain. Dr. Vidal got out of their Peugeot 403 and looked around. He noticed that their car was covered in burn marks, as if scorched by a blowtorch. Now, that's an important indicator right there. Rafa exited the car, too, and scanned their surroundings. Nothing looked familiar. The couple, the couple decided to get back into their car and drive until they saw someone to ask for directions. Within a few minutes, they did come across people walking alongside the road. After hailing them and stopping to talk, the Vidals immediately noted their strange accent. What followed was mind-blowing. The couple found out that they were in the middle of Mexico almost 4,000 miles away from their home, which they left in their little car just two days earlier. The Vidals were from Argentina and had no idea how or why they ended up on that rural road so far from home. Their first impulse was to head to Mexico City, just an hour or so away, to present themselves at the Argentinian consulate and see what officials from their own country could do to help them. You know, when it comes to space-time, there are so many different types of phenomena that occur regularly, but not on a magnitude that perturbs the daily lives of most people. Now, if spontaneous teleportation is real, then is the phenomenon more in line with a space-time anomaly or tricks? played on people by evil spirits. In other words, are people teleporting because spirits are teleporting them, similar to what they would do with a small object? The reason I say that is because there was a case of two little boys who may have experienced such a thing. It's the story of little Alfredo and Paolo Pancini, seven and eight years old, respectively, in 1901. And their crazy parents who thought it was a good idea to have the boys tag along with them to a seance. One evening, the seven-year-old Alfred, who had recently attended a spiritualistic seance, experienced sudden bouts of sleepiness accompanied by peculiar occurrences. During these episodes, Alfred spoke in an unfamiliar oratorical voice using languages such as French, Latin, and Greek, even reciting portions of the Divine Comedy. On one occasion, he made a promise during one of these fits, predicting the preparation of a good supper. To everyone's surprise, the promised items 
including Italian sausage over a pound of cheese and large sweetmeats, appeared on the table, while Alfred's bed held the sweetmeats. Alfred was placed in a boarding school in Pitonto, where he spent two years. Even there, strange incidents continued. When someone merely intended to ask a question, not yet fully formed mentally, Alfred unconsciously wrote down the answer. In another instance, while he was in attendance of a spiritualistic seance with three professors present, he accurately identified the need for a wooden triangle for communication and revealed its location in the kitchen. The seance began, leading to the following dialogue. Will you answer us? Yes, but the triangle must be made of wood. We don't have one. I've already crafted one, and you'll find it in the kitchen, in a stewing pan. And that is exactly what they found. A wooden triangle was discovered in a saucepan, intricately made with neatly halved nails at the corners. Why a wooden triangle? Well, I'm guessing they're not going to use it to play pool. So it must be some type of planchet, like for a Ouija board. They are commonly heart-shaped, but the older ones, some of those are triangle-shaped. When Alfred turned 10 and left the boarding school for home, new phenomena unfolded, involving his 8-year-old brother, Paul. One morning, at 9 o'clock in Ruvo, the boys found themselves at 9.30 in Molfetta, before the convent, without understanding how. On another occasion, with a desire to dine at 12.30, the Poncinis sent Paul to fetch wine. Waiting for his return for half an hour, they sent Alfred to find him. At one o'clock, both boys were on a boat near Barletta, just before Trinitopoli. The children cried until the boatman, claiming payment from an unknown individual, turned back, bringing them ashore. They were recognized by a coachman who knew them. They were taken back to Ruvo, arriving at 3.30 on the same day. In a matter of minutes, and through various means, the boys found themselves alternately in four different towns, returning to Ruvo with the assistance of family, friends, or public authorities. One day, the boys were in Ruvo's piazza at 1.35, and ten minutes later, they appeared at Trani by the door of their uncle. While in a hypnotic state, Alfred astounded everyone by answering difficult questions. Among his announcements, he stated he couldn't leave the next day, but only after 15 days. The next day, his uncle's horse fell ill. So the aunt hired a vehicle to return the nephews to Ruvo, but upon reaching their parents, they disappeared again, reappearing in Trani. After being brought back to Ruvo once more, they vanished again and were discovered in Bisegli. Concluding the futility of resisting supernatural forces, they were guided back to Trani to await the end of the fortnight. Faced with these perplexing events, the boy's mother sought the assistance of Monsignor Berardi, requesting Alfred's return to the boarding school. During the conversation, the children mysteriously disappeared once again, adding to the enigma surrounding their unexplainable journeys. These accounts challenge our understanding of space-time raising questions about the nature of reality and the potential influence of supernatural forces. Whether we attribute these things to space-time anomalies or the works of spirits, the phenomenon of teleportation remains a captivating and elusive aspect of the paranormal. The stories underscore the impact that such events can have on the lives of those involved, leading to arrest investigations, and even relocation across vast distances. As we think about the implications here, 
The mysteries surrounding spontaneous teleportation continued to challenge the boundaries of what we believe to be possible in the realm of human experience and strange phenomena. Perhaps the lesson here is it's probably not a good idea to take your kids out for a night of dinner and witchcraft. There's holidays for that. 